Imagine brewing medicine in your own gut. No pharmacy, just plants. Polyphenols are the raw ingredients. Every colorful bite becomes macro, microcrafted heart, brain, and blood sugar fuel. Stay with me to see how your microbiome can turn food into therapy. And we'll grab three dead simple ways to feed the process tonight. Another week, another discovery. Let's dive in. Today, we are going to talk about polyphenols. What are they and why should you care? Polyphenols are plant-made compounds that act like tiny little bodyguards signaling in your cells, feeding your, mut, uh, your, your gut biomes, and scavenging for those harmful re free radicals all at once. In plants, there are over 8,000 different polyphenols. What are they and what are the benefits? Well, the truth of the matter is they're all good, so get as many of them as you can, but there are some subcategories that are a little better at some things than others. First off, we'll talk about phenolic acids. These are found in coffee, apples, and whole grains. The benefit of these is helping with blood sugar regulation, slowing that absorption of glucose from food, and um, you know, can improve your fasting glucose and lipid markers potentially within a few weeks. Flavonoids, you may have heard of them, or you may not have, depending if you're in the health food scene like I am. But if you've been watching my videos, yeah, you, 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 you'll get to hear about them every now and then. These contain about 60% of all the polyphenols we know of. These are found in berries, kale, green tea, and dark chocolate. The main benefits of these mostly tie into heart health. They have been found to cause your blood vessels to widen and ultimately reduce chronic irritation that stiffens them, leading to better blood pressure and um, better LDL markers, reducing your risk of heart disease. Another kind of smaller category, still beans, you may have heard of these although you didn't probably hear the term still beans, this is found in gra red grape skin, red wine, and blueberries. There was a study done that said, hey, drink red wine, and there's benefits to it. Well, really, it's these polyphenols that are in it. You don't have to drink red wine to get that, and there's obviously maybe some downsides to red wine in the sense you're actually drinking alcohol, but that polyphenol benefit is enough for them to use it as a marketing term. The cool thing about steel beans is they can kick off autophagy in your body. Now, what autophagy actually is, if you've never heard of it, and I'll probably do a whole video about it at some point, but it's your body telling itself to take out the garbage. Go find those old dead cells, those cells we don't care about, the cells that are not doing anything good, the disease cells, get rid of them and build new cells. Um, so having that kick off is wonderful for longevity purposes for the most part. It helps DNA repair and just clean out that bad stuff that is making you old. Another category, lignans, these are found in flax seeds, sesame seeds, and whole grains. Um, their benefit is a little bit more nuanced. Outside of the normal benefits of polyphenols, they can help with stabilizing your hormones. So if you have estrogen swings or your hormones are a little bit out of balance, this can help get your body regulated. It also can help tampen chronic inflammation in your arteries and other tissues similar to the other polyphenols. Polyphenols are not just antioxidants, although they have those benefits as well, which is chasing free radicals and getting rid of them, which can help aging. So where do we actually get these? Well, food, plants is where they come from. Some of the highest concentration of polyphenols can be found in something like, say, cloves. 100 grams of cloves can contain over 15,000 polyphenols, about the equivalent of 70 blueberries. But who's going to eat 100 grams of cloves? That's a lot. And how do you actually turn those polyphenols into something useful for your body. The reality is, is, is it's not as simple as, hey, I got some polyphenols, they are automatically going to work. The bioavailability is always the challenge in any study where you compare the polyphenols in a lab versus in a real body. 
This is d basically driven by how your body metabolizes them. And to make things even more difficult, we all have a unique body type, and we all interact with this a little bit differently. There is no one-size-fits-all solution here. Heart disease leads to death. Type 2 diabetes keeps climbing. Pills promise a shortcut. But a rainbow of polyphenols actually delivers the real fix, even if we can't pinpoint the exact reason why. So, absorbing them and actually taking the benefits. Well, 5 to 10% of the polyphenols that you eat actually don't make it through your small intestine and absorb into your bloodstream. Solution, eat lots and lots of polyphenols and you will absorb a lot more. Are we wasting the other 90%? Well, no, we are not. The other benefits still exist even if you don't actually absorb them and get them into your cells. The other benefits are just, they keep going down your gut and potentially just help things get out, which is a huge benefit by itself. But in addition to that, sometimes they bind with other polyphenols and are absorbed farther down in your digestion and even more potent forms. But that's not all. In addition, they can help build a really diverse gut bacterial, you know, microbiome, which is incredibly beneficial for helping you fight off disease and improves digestion. There is no downside. Eat a lot of them. A study was done um, in 2003 observing over 56,000 adults over 23 years and found that the highest flavonoid eaters, they reduced their death by heart-related diseases by 21%. Another one found that drinking berry juice um, over a 12-week trial dropped the blood pressure by 7.3 points. 7.3 points, if your blood pressure is really high, is probably maybe not enough in your head. But, you know, that could be going from 145 to 138. And in reality, when we're dealing with blood pressure, a five-point drop can reduce your risk, uh, you know, a heart attack or a stroke by 10 to 13 percent, meaning that just drinking high polyphenol count juice could lower your chance of death by a heart attack by 15 percent or stroke by 20 percent. Whole, whole berries are actually better than juice, but it is a huge benefit um, and worth, worth the effort. The juice tastes good anyway. Now, chasing those high-dose polyphenols isn't the answer either. Meta-analysis of 281 randomized trials found that the benefits flatten or reversed at mega-dose polyphenol pills. You can have too much of a good thing as well, which is if you actually do manage to get that much polyphenols into your system, more than you actually would get traditionally, it can actually flip and become a pro-oxidant and do damage to your cells similar to a free radical. So, the answer, eat lots and lots of fruits and veggies. Paint your diet with color. Eat dark berries, leafy greens, red onions or cabbage, citrus, white beans. Diversity is the answer. It feeds your gut biome, which in turn creates bioactive metabodies in your gut, which ultimately is where your main contact with the world is and either promotes disease or promotes health. More variety is the answer. Okay. Now, variety is great and eating a lot of it is great, but you really do want to swap out the bad with the good. A couple examples. Don't eat butter, eat extra virgin olive oil. Check out my video if you're curious about the benefits last week. If you love candy, you love chocolate, you don't stop eating it. Just don't eat the milk chocolate. Have the dark chocolate, 70% cocoa or better. You need some energy in the morning. Uh, yeah, no more Red Bull. But have some fresh brewed coffee or tea. Tons of polyphenol benefits with both of those. Now, if you're eating lots of fruits and veggies, which you should be, um, you want to be careful in the way you're cooking them. Boiling actually leaches the polyphenols out of the veggies into the water. And unless you drink the water, you just lose them. Much better options are going to be stir frying or uh, steaming. Boiling is really the worst way to do it. 
Lastly, the spice of life is spices. And they're packed with polyphenols. You can, it's almost impossible to find as rich polyphenols as you can find in spices. Check out my video about oregano if you're curious. Make sure you spice your food. It can double your polyphenol count and make it delicious at the same time. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, uh, drop me a comment of your, your favorite polyphenol rich foods. I'd love to know about them. Next week, we're going to dive into organic Greek yogurt. I'm really curious the benefits and maybe the downsides of yogurt, and I wanna share them with you. Well, thank you for watching. God bless.